Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome inside Toyota Stadium for the final match of the 2024 Dallas Cup. It's the Gordon Jago Supergroup Final featuring FC Dallas U19 Academy versus Sao Paulo FC from Brazil. Owen Newkirk alongside Steve Davis live here from Toyota Stadium. And we're thrilled to have you here for this fantastic final of the Supergroup. Both teams advanced on Friday. They had a day to recover, and for FC Dallas and for Sao Paulo, this is the pinnacle of a very important week for them. Yeah, looking forward to this one, Owen. Good to be here with you for one more final. We always, uh, we love this tournament, the Dallas Cup. The Super Group is what, uh, is sort of the splashy highlight group of it, so looking forward to this one. Take a look at the lineup first for FC Dallas. No changes of the starting 11 from Friday's start. I'll have yeah. to keep an eye on that. There is one, Braden Backus, listed here, but I don't know he was on not in the starting lineup on my roster. Here's the Sao Paulo lineup. They had two changes as starters from Friday, Marcelo and Kaua on the bench with Paulinho and Enzo Boer getting the start today. It's number seven, Ryan Dos Santos. We're just gonna call him Ryan, that's what he goes by. Absolutely sensational in the semifinal win the other day. Had a hat trick, set up a goal, set up a penalty kick, helped set up the penalty kick. He's absolutely sensational. Referees today, Kaylor Herrera from Costa Rica is the match referee. William Chow and Gabriela Jimenez, also from Costa Rica, will be the assistant referees. Filiberto Martinez from El Salvador is the fourth official. And our VAR, who just did a match earlier today, Karen Hernandez from Mexico, assistant VAR Alyssa Nichols of the United States. Yeah, we've seen uh, this is the fourth final we've seen today here at Toyota Stadium. And this is the first time we've seen a man in the middle. I really love that. Uh, Dallas Cup and soccer in general, incorporating more female referees. First three I finals agree. we watched today were officiated by women. In this case, Keeler Herrera, he's a CONCACAF level official. In fact, he was the uh, he was the fourth official just a week ago as the United States defeated Jamaica over at AT&T Stadium. In the Nations League semifinal. Yep. A match that almost went Jamaica's way until the very last minute. So here's the matchup to watch today, Owen. I just talked about Ryan. He's going to play underneath the striker for Sao Paulo. Uh, terrific player. But I thought the two best players probably for FC Dallas in the semifinal the other night were the two holding midfielders, Luis Marquez and Anthony Ramirez, especially Anthony Ramirez. He's been playing for North Texas SC for a couple of years already. So, uh, so he's already at that level. Dylan Lacey, another one to watch. He's uh, got the ball right there in the center circle right now. Number number 10 for FC Dallas is the number 10 in their 4-2-3-1 setup. Already we're off to a great start as the referee, Kaylor Herrera, is upset with Sao Paulo for having a warm-up ball still on the field. The assistant referee on the far side, Gabriela Jimenez, goes and salvages it. And so we are about to get underway. Dallas will get the opening half kickoff, attacking the north end of Toyota Stadium. Dylan Lacey with the start. Anthony Ramirez with a touch, and we are underway. And unlike the previous finals, where we may most likely be seeing these players for the first time, Steve, now we get to see them for the second time in the last three days. Long ball looking forward for Ishmael Nieves, but was undercut, played away by Bernardo. He's their defensive midfielder. Now a through ball and a chance to run early. Here's Barron, cuts back on his right foot. Oh, what a save! Felipe Price with the early denial of Daniel Barron, and that was a glorious opportunity in the game's opening minute. Another shot by Salazar is sliced wide. How about that for an opening salvo? Well, I really think that FC Dallas is gonna have their hands full tonight, but uh, this is why they play, you know. We it's not one on paper, and Dallas with a really bright start. As Barron, you thought he was going to shoot there, but he cuts the ball back on his preferred right foot. Forces a really good save from Felipe Priest. Dylan Lacey gets in an early block. 
Dallas seems fired up, and they probably know that they have to bring the energy because we saw so much skill from Sao Paulo as they beat Fulham 4-0 in the semifinal on Friday. They are full of goals, the Brazilian club. As they work it forward down the right side, here's Enzo Bohr, one of the substitutes. Now gets the start ahead of Kaua, who played a large number of minutes on that right wing. Lucas Loss, he and Luis Osorio will man the back line. Osorio, Loss, over the top, into Alves, cuts toward the end line, back on his left foot. Good defensive play there by Marquez. Didn't go out, it was close. And Barron did a nice job to not only keep it in, but turn. Dallas trying to work out a very tight defensive spot, and they've done so for the moment. Ramirez. You might be able to hear on the field mics a couple of players yelling, Tony. Anthony able to work it out to the right side. Christian Gallo scored that beautiful goal early. Free header in the box against Botafogo. And that was a huge difference. One of the more impressive performances on Friday for FCD belongs to Luke Schreiner. He anchors that back line alongside Aiden Basil. Into the middle. Anguiano. An aggressive diagonal ball. A little bit too direct there as he was looking for Salazar. Yeah, good idea though from Anguiano. Just didn't quite get the weight of the pass right. I thought he had the angle right. Had the angle. Just hit it a little too hard, needed that ball to check up, maybe just a little bit of nervous energy there, over hitting the ball. A little bit of grappling in the middle, that's gonna be a foul against Ramirez as he put his arms around Alves. So the other day, Dylan Lacey came out of the match and I remember you and I talking about how we thought he still had a little gas in the tank, but maybe it was about this. Over the top ball, too far. And goalkeeper Victor Gomez for Dallas scoops it up. Yeah, maybe it was about FC Dallas coaching staff deciding that they needed to save whatever they could for, for this match in the final. Salazar's ball isn't quite the angle he needed to be to find Daniel Barron on the left wing. Gallo knocks it down. Salazar gave it away. That's Luis, uh, Lucas Ferreira over on the left side of what looks like a bit of a diamond midfield. Although it is a pretty free flowing look. A quick run. Uh, Luis Osorio knocks it out as pressure coming from Gallo. I mean, we definitely know that Ryan will be in the aggressive forward position of the midfield with Ferreira, Alves, and Bernardo behind him. But we did see Lucas Ferreira get forward at times. Here's the ball through again. Looking for Palino. Ryan with it. Touch into a little bit of space. Palino, his shot deflected. And then put away into the end zone. So he gets to start over, over Marcelo for the final. Yes, yeah, Paulo really good at finding spaces, checking in and out of spaces, making a run behind. If they don't get it, just recycle the run. It's a lot, going to be a lot to deal with for FC Dallas defenders and midfielders today. Paulinho scored one of the two goals against uh, Monterey in their 2-1 win on Monday, the second game of their bracket group play. Salazar. Marquez, Ramirez, little one-two. Marquez, Lacey, gave it away. Tried to make a quick touch, but couldn't find Ramirez. And a crunching collision. Paulinho goes down. And it'll be a free kick for Dallas, and looks like he's going to recover okay. Of course, Sampalo was in the Supergroup final last year. You and I on call that game against Michelin. 
from Denmark. Couple of flicks. Igor was down that right side, but well defended. Enzo Bohr slides in with Lacey. Ooh, that was a nasty slide together. I don't think there was a lot of venom in it, but Lacey is down grabbing his left shin. Looks like it's only going to be a talking to from the Costa Rican referee, but uh, I don't know about, uh, I guess Venom uh, might connote uh, malicious intent, but there was, there was a lot of contact there. Ramirez, diagonal ball, drops in for Gallo. Numbers getting forward on the far side. Gallo plays it short to Salazar. Through the legs, a little nutmeg, but he couldn't find Lacey. He was open. Good step up play. Marquez still going. Salazar. Nieves. Lacey. Out to the left. Barron. Wanted the shot on his left instead on his right. Deflected. And a save by Felipe Price. And yeah, one more time, Barron showing left and then cutting the ball back to his preferred right foot. So you think they'll figure that out. And here we now go. Now some Here's space Ryan. for Ryan against Basil to his right. And he shoots it just wide. Gomez had the angle. I think he had it covered, but there's the first opportunity for Sao Paulo here in the eighth minute. That's the kid we're talking about. The young man, he's not a kid. Eighth minute. First really good opportunity for the team from Brazil. Up through the midfield. Heavy touch by Salazar, but he recovered. And then a little bit of interference there from Nieves, but he got away with it. Not maybe a full-on screen, but a little bit of a pick play. Second time Salazar's found himself in a good spot and then just sort of couldn't figure out what he wanted to do with the ball or just did the wrong thing. Igor cuts in on his left foot. Still going. Leaves it off for Ryan. He's through. Oh, what a save. Stretching with the right foot. Gomez denied what looked like a sure opener as Ryan Dos Santos thought he might have had his fourth goal of the last two matches. Well, again, the movement off the ball is just so slick from Sao Paulo. And you saw they just totally sliced apart the FC Dallas defense that time. And it took a really, really good save to keep this game level. And then Bernardo went for the spectacular and missed by quite some margin on the follow-up. I'll tell you what, I was impressed with Victor Gomez his command of his area, his distribution, and when he had to, made a big save against Botafogo, and he had a huge stop early in the match here. Daniel Baron, Baron, excuse me, down the left side and just got it caught in his feet as he was trying to do a step over against Igor. They've had some joy here, FC Dallas, down that left side early. But Igor had it sussed out that time. He knew that Baron wanted to go over to his right foot, so he just played him, made him go to the left, and in the end, he just sort of got his footwork wrong. Well, these two teams are up for this fight. Ryan, pass broken up. Well, the pace of this one's so much faster than what we watched in the under-19 final. And not only is that about the, the, the level of teams, you know, this being the higher level in the super group, but also about uh, this super group game, the te both teams had that extra day of rest, the, the rest day yesterday. Whereas in the under-19 final, the semifinals were just yesterday. Six day, games in six days for those, those U18s and the U19s. Foul on Marquez here. Yeah, whereas these guys are playing their fifth game in seven days. Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday for Sao Paulo. Yeah, fifth game in eight, eight days, excuse me. And math, the, math is hard. And the same for FC Dallas. They played in the Cotton Bowl on T, against Tigres on Sunday. And then Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then this one, the final. Christian Gallo and Angel Medrano. Gallo scored six minutes in, an early goal for FC Dallas, who had the lead for almost all of it. And then 
Medrano got a late one on a really nice passing sequence that started in their own end of the field and worked all the way up and ended up with a, I wouldn't call it a tap in, but a nice finish in the box. Now, that uh, that second goal, Steve, the video of that made the rounds on social media for FC Dallas on Friday because of the combination passing mm. that ended up in the goal. Yep. And to be fair, it was a very nice team move. Long ball. Basil forward looking for Nieves. Yeah, I saw that online and then uh, clicked to make sure I was... Uh, I had the audio on because I wanted to hear your goal call, <laughs> but uh, they didn't. They didn't include the audio with it. One of them did. Oh yeah, oh, I, I missed heard that. One. Unfortunately, it cut off before you did your fantastic I, analysis. I, I, I don't care about that. I know you don't, but the rest of us do. Ryan wins it free. Ferreira. Running at the back line, hits it out wide. Paulinho has to chase, but it gives Dallas a chance to try to recover. Still moving forward, Sao Paulo. The cross comes in, well read by Anguiano. Didn't control it, but he kept it away as Dallas stretched a bit here in the 13th minute. And by far the biggest crowd of the day Really filling in on the west side stands, plus a few dignitaries on the Hall of Fame balcony. I can't necessarily see it on our game camera, but we can hear it. Hope everybody's enjoying their Easter Sunday. Osorio. Bernardo through the middle. Igor. Boy, you're right. Even though that one was missed, trying to find Ryan, the pace and the execution of moving those balls around the back line and forward is so much quicker, even than the U19 match we just saw. The level, the precision. And it, Steve, it, we, we remarked it when was watching the U19 final, until you get the close-up camera shots of these kids, you realize they are still teenagers because for all intents and purposes, they look like young pros. Here's a giveaway on the clearing attempt from Ramirez, an opportunity for Ferreira, left foot, and he rips it home. Lucas Ferreira scores in the 15th minute. So Paulo has the lead as a turnover from the build out of the back undoes FC Dallas. Well, that's Ferreira with the really solid finish. Mistake coming out of the back for FC Dallas, but who is it that sets it up? And he's just got such a good feel for holding the ball, waiting until just the right minute to make the pass. It's Ryan. You'll see it here as he just waits and waits and waits, and there it is. Now the player's there where he wants it. It's a pretty easy finish from about 12 yards little offset from the center of the goal. What a nice weighted pass, too. You talk about waiting in time, but the the, yeah. the the pace of the pass, he allowed Ferreira to run onto that, take a touch, and smash it. It wasn't one where he had to readjust. It was just the right amount of energy. Yeah, so he, he, just know, he knows exactly how to pull the ball away from pressure, buy himself a little bit more time, buy his runners a little bit more time, and then, as you said, play that perfectly weighted pass in. FC Dallas seems up for this fight. I think they were came in, understandably, the underdogs. And they had some early chances. Yeah, it's uh, it was down the left side. Daniel Barron, who, by the way, is a Polish under-18 international. He's, of course, a local kid, but I assume he has Polish lineage. Long ball down the side. Didn't connect as Nieves was coming from an offside position. So, But Barron had a couple of... Good opportunities early. Long ball forward by Andrade. Gallo. Ramirez. Schreiner. He was busy, Luke Schreiner. Yeah, I was just thinking, it seems like Basel, uh, 
Bustle's been the little bit busier center back so far, but I thought Schreiner was really good the other day. I wonder if his showing against Botafogo was something picked up by Sao Paulo and said maybe we should stay away from him. Long switch of play by Nieves down the left side. Here's Barron. Heavy first touch, but almost got past Igor. It's a good second effort by the right back. Enzo Bohr. There's Schreiner on cue. Good play to deny Paulino, Paulino the service. As Dallas has tried to build out against the press. What's always been on for them so far, they've been hitting those big switching balls. Either out to Barron on one side or... Ooh, Barron had it again. Steve, I don't know if Ramirez saw it or just chose not to hit it, but you can see him queuing up for that space of that diagonal you were just talking yeah. about. Here he is, Barron, Lacey. Lacey got the ball, looked up, was looking for a runner. There wasn't one. I think if... If Marquez was about five yards deeper when he Lacey got that, maybe he makes that run and gets a through ball. Anguiano, Marquez. Same thing with Lacey there. He wanted the ball to feet. Marquez wanted him to, to make a run. Barron, big physical left winger, shrugs off to Enzo Bohr, who's a little shaken up after that coming together. I'm sort of watching Dylan Lacey's positioning. What you and I noted the other day was that when he gets the ball in forward positions and advanced positions facing goal, he, he's really effective as he drops deeper in, trying to help build out a possession as he's moving with his back to the goal, maybe not quite as effective. Nieves, nice touch as he was falling down. Lacey with a spin, takes the shot, deflected. Uh, Osorio got enough of that to not let it get on frame. Now a chance for a counterattack. Sao Paulo, Ryan, over the top, a little too much on it. We he praised on the attacker, but then this time he didn't get it right. Victor Gomez gobbles it up and wants his defense to press up the field. No, he did get it right, but then again, that was a 50-yard pass that uh, ended the win, by the way, that he just attempted. Considering that in the two matches we've seen him, he's had four goals and two assists. I think we can give him a pass on one that wasn't a little uh, too far in front. Yeah, and slipped in another ball that turned into a penalty kick that wasn't converted. Barron down the right, or down the left, excuse me, against the right side of the Sao Paulo back line. And thought he won the throw in, he did not. Sao Paulo defends out of this 4-4-2, and they're really well organized. They keep the lines tight. They don't, want to, they don't necessarily press a lot, but what, what they do is they're compact, so they as Dallas draws them over to one side. Again, that switch is on, and that's uh, allowing Dallas to get into the final third regularly. Now, what they do with it from there, not easy, but. Ferreira, through ball. Paulinho gets behind. Gomez slows it down. Paulinho back heel, and Basil comes through and helps clean it up. They needed all three. The two center backs and the goalkeeper, but they did just enough to deny Paulinho of what would have been a very improvised second. Now he's got a lot of speed there, but Victor Gomez, the goalkeeper, does a really good job of coming out and, and just causing enough chaos around the situation that, uh, that he's not able to actually get anything, any kind of really good shot away, although he did try a cheeky little back heel, didn't he? Here, we'll see it again as uh, there he is, Paulinho just streaking through there. Victor Gomez getting something on the ball, and there you see him trying to put the, put his back heel through it, but it's Basel that comes in and interrupts that effort. You would not accuse that of being a Mario Balotelli-type back heel. <laughs> That's something different. <laughs> it's all together. That was actually a really good idea. Yeah. This particular one from Paulinho. Well, it's what he had. It's all he had in the moment, so he sure. He improvised. Now he goes on his right foot, takes the shot. Woo. Didn't look like he had much space, but he put more on it than initially we thought. And that one just whistles by the right post. Another chance is Sao Paulo starting to pile up the opportunities. Well, you can tell from the goalkeeper's reaction, couldn't you, that he was worried. As he as he just, just gets frozen in place, Victor Gomez, and as he turns over his shoulder to look, you can tell that that's the look of a guy that says, this one isn't going in, is it? He did not have that one covered, 
Sometimes you'll say that as a goal. Uh, the goalkeeper had the angle cover, meaning yeah. if it was on frame, he makes the save. Yep. I don't think he makes the save if that one was on the goal. Lucas Ferreira. Overlap on the outside. The pass is broken up. Boy, you're right. Aiden Basil has been much more the busy party on the back line. I think they've been trying to go away from Schreiner, who was so, so good against Botafogo. Yeah, it could just be that just the ball just happens to be coming yep. his way more often. I I don't know that I look at San Paulo and say they're in there saying we, we've got to go away from this guy or this guy. They, they look like more the team that says this is what we do, try to stop us. Fair point. That's a tough ball from Schreiner. Giveaway. Alves cuts back. Top of the box. Wide. I don't know if Gomez saw much of that. But Dallas has to be cleaner in possession because that is just gifting the Brazilians an opportunity. Yeah, that's just a little loss of focus there because, I mean, that's on a restart. It, it, there's absolutely no reason to be giving that ball away there. Dallas started brightly. Now they're behind. Lucas Ferreira's goal and the 15th minute puts Sao Paulo ahead. And it feels like the last five to well, more like 10 minutes have been played in the Dallas half of the field. Igor, the cross, Ferreira for two. Side foot goes over the top. Yeah, pressure and shots really starting to stack up now for Sao Paulo. You know, you just never see any of the white shirts, any of the Brazilians stop moving in the attack. They're just moving around. Even if it's little movements, you're always unsettling the defense. There's always a runner, always an overlapping runner, and it's just hard to track all of them. It's pleasing to the eye, isn't it, to see all those runs and the fluidity? Fun. Obviously, for FC Dallas supporters, maybe don't, don't want to see the scoring chances accumulating, but it is a very attractive attacking style. Alves down in the box on a challenge from Anguiano. A few half-hearted appeals for a foul. Referee touching his earpiece briefly just to hear from VAR. Everything seems to be on the up and up. Yeah, and you saw it right there. Alves was the third man running, and he ends up... Uh, a little too quick, two pass combination. Finds the ball inside the penalty area. Nothing comes of it, but again, it's just a really good movement, slick movement all over. Now look at all these Sao Paulo players forward right now as they possess, getting it deep into the corner. The cross comes in, Ramirez is there to defend. It'll be another throw. But what we've remarked, as much as their offense was fun to see on Friday was how much the commitment for Sao Paulo players after being forward was how, how much they got back and defended very quickly. And, and I think that's about this level. I mean, this is the Sao Paulo basically reserve team, the young reserves. And so they're true professional players who train probably every day. And I, I think that's the difference. And when you train every day like that, you're, you're just at another level of fitness. 05s and 06 birthdays for the most part. Igor is actually an 07 birth year. So the youngest of the squad players on either team. Yet he is getting significant minutes. They've been very happy with him. Vishnievis. Dallas gets it into the attacking half. Possessing, trying to control the game a little bit after really being overrun for the better part of 15 minutes. But see, there you see it. They're, they're defending with all 10 guys, plus, of course, the goalkeeper. A 4-4-2 defensive formation. And they're not a big pressing team. They'll let you have the ball back there mostly. Just drop into the mid block. As the ball moves down a little further, they're going to drop into two really well-organized banks of four, a little lower block. Hard to get through. You make the final. You're Dallas. You know that many people were impressed by the offense for Sao Paulo. Bernardo flips it forward toward Ryan. Cleared away by Schreiner. Will be a throw. But mentality-wise, now that Dallas has conceded, they're down a goal and facing a team that some consider to be the favorite. 
Ooh, a little bit of trickery from Enzo Bohr. A little rainbow ball. It worked briefly, but again, Aiden Basil came over and snuffed that one out. Igor into the corner. Lucas Loss, closed down by Lacey. Got the first touch, Osorio just tall enough to hold that one off, a sliding challenge by Marquez. And then Igor came in and got the ball. Referee says play on as Lacey was down. Marquez is shaken up. Well, a lot of effort for Dallas as they were trying to catch Sao Paulo forward and it didn't come to anything. And boy, there was a collision off the ball and they're gonna call a foul on Anguiano there as he took down Enzo Bohr. Uh, it's a big collision there. I was watching it. You, you see it there. Both players have their eye on the ball. Referee Kilo Herrera from Costa Rica, very quick to just tell everybody as it started to get a little contentious, just sort of did the hand wave as in, nope, I'm not hearing any of it. Just I've called a foul, and that's where we're going to leave it. Uh, watching some of the players reach for some hydration. A referee saying, no, 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 this isn't an official hydration break. Trying to bring everybody back on the field. Enzo Bohr is up and okay. But I, you, I think it's fair to say it's probably the warmest it's been all day and maybe the most humidity. Yeah, it's still a little breeze, and that helps a little bit. But you're right, the, the air is a little sticky here. Of course, Dallas, which trains in this kind of weather. I'm sure Sao Paulo has dealt with their fair share of heat and humidity. Nice turn by Alves. The crowd appreciates it. The cross in and Basil gets the header to clear. And now a chance to run. Lacey and Osorio gets there first, just knocks it out. Lacey knows he can go quickly. But his teammates were not that far out. Boy, Dylan Lacey sees an opportunity for a quick counterattack, but he's on an island when he does it. Twenty-ninth minute. This game has been far different than the last match we saw the U19 boys final. As far as the pace, intensity, the energy levels. Marquez, Lacey flicks it forward. Barron. And Loss steps across and slows it down. Sao Paulo is a three-time supergroup champion, but it hasn't they haven't won in a while. 2009 was the last time they won a supergroup. Uh, you're defeating the Vancouver Whitecaps reserve team. Nice tackle by Anguiano. Lacey again. Anguiano taken down by Enzo Bohr, and he can't believe it. He thought he got the ball there. It'll be a Dallas free kick. It was close. I could have seen that one going either way. Schreiner. Out to the right side for Gallo. Salazar, free floating on that right side. Sometimes drops deep. Nice ball through. Oh, a deflection. Gallo looked like he had some space, but a foot in. I think Lucas Ferreira got it. Then he gets grabbed by Nieves as he spins, still has the ball. Little nutmeg and pops it down the left side. Paulinho. Alves. Schreiner came for it, didn't get all of it. Basil clears. Schreiner, Barron. Boy, the swarming counter press from Sao Paulo. Overwhelming for Dallas. Nice back heel by Bohr. The Sao Paulo fans continue to roar with delight. Igor, the cross, a lot of pace, too much. It goes all the way over for a throw on the far side. It's interesting, isn't it? You know, Sao Paulo in, in the semifinal, a comfortable win, but it, it was also very professional. I, I don't know that I really saw some of the tricks and flicks and flair that we're seeing so far. And, no. they, and they've only got a 1-0 lead right now. I agree. We've seen more of that in this one. Including an attempted uh, back heel goal, which uh, was really just sort of out of a necessity at the moment. That wasn't really flair. No, in fact, I, I would classify that as the least flair right. of the of the bunch that you listed. Nieves with the turn. Bernardo 
Gave up a little size there, but didn't get pushed around at all. Ramirez got fouled. Yeah, he was waiting for it. Ryan got into it, and then, oh, a kick away. Taylor Herrera, the Costa Rican referee, trying to keep a lid on things without going to his yellow cards. Barron, down the left, gets a step toward the end line. A little shove from Bohr, not enough. It stays in, Gallo on the far right side. Salazar, Dallas getting numbers forward. Salazar takes the shot, it's right in on goal. Maybe he was looking for Lacey to, little, to try to get a, a deflection on that, but it was on target. And Dallas, can they recognize the moments a little better, you know, when when Barron gets the ball on that left wing and it looks like he can create a little space, get across it. Can Dallas get a few more players arriving, a couple more runners, so a little confusion back there, you know, maybe mix up some marking assignments. Anthony Ramirez. But given the speed that the Brazilian team can attack with, I'm not sure I blame them too much for being a little bit more conservative and saying, no, I, I'm not going to make this run. I'm just going to stay right here where it's nice and safe and, and where I know I'm not going to have to run back and chase somebody for 95 yards. Nieves took a touch. He's got Lacey through. Lacey down the right side, has a step, takes the early shot and a save. Lucas Loss was able to cover that one, but that was the, one of the better balls ripping through the lines for Sao, uh, of Sao Paulo's defense. Yeah, Nieves did a really good job there of finding a, just a little space, turning on it, and then immediately recognizing that he had the passing lane available, not hesitating. Here they come again, Is Barron again. Long effort, spilled by the goalkeeper, charging after it, Lacey, he gets it first, and a penalty! Contact from Price. Dylan Lacey in a heap over the end line after the long shot from Barron, and we are going to see a penalty kick for FC Dallas here in the 34th minute. Well, I tell you what, Sao Paulo hasn't done a lot wrong today, but uh, with Felipe Price, when he misses that ball, or I'm sorry, he doesn't miss it, when he fumbles that ball, when he doesn't get it clean, either catch it, on the ground, it's a grass cutter, but it's from a long way out. He should be able to handle that ball, and if he can't, he's got to knock it well, well, well wide. And so when he allows that opportunity, Dylan Lacey does a really good job of, of following the shot, you know, understanding that maybe he'll get there, maybe he won't, but he does get there. So they'll take a look at it, of course. You can see the VAR room. Karen Hernandez from Mexico. Alyssa Nichols from the United States. Well, looks like Salazar is stepping up for this one. If I... Well, I do see that uh, Priest gets the ball. I thought he got a touch on it there, but looks like the check is complete. Well, remember, just getting the ball is not grounds for not being a foul. Yep. And so Dallas will get the penalty and a chance to equalize here in the 35th minute. The whistle is not yet blown. So you see it here. Uh, I take uh, it back. I don't think he got a touch. That angle looks more incriminating than the other yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. That looks fairly definitive. And even if it's not definitive, that was the original call. They've got to have enough evidence to overturn it. Salazar standing over this one. Long time to wait. as we still wait for the VAR to make a determination. All right, here we go. It'll be now the 36th minute officially. The shot, and Salazar tucks it home inside the right post, and we are all square, 1-1 after 36 minutes. Well, we just watched a bunch of good penalty kicks taken in the under-19 Dallas Cup final. Nine converted, another one just off the post. That was another good penalty kick. Not a lot of pace, but if you get the placement right, you don't have to hit it that hard. That's exactly what Salazar did. Just reversed it from his left foot. Nice and calm, 1-1. One, one. 
Well, that changes things, doesn't it? As that came after a run of a goal from Lucas Ferreira in the 15th minute. Then Paulinho came on a through ball, almost scored on a back heel. He then had a shot outside of the box just wide. Alves took a shot off a turnover. Ferreira with a side-footed volley. But then things started to change, and it felt like Dylan Lacey was the middle of kind of driving the energy, looking for counter rushes. And he was the one that drew the, the foul in the box with his extra off the ball running. And well, so we're even, all square here in the Supergroup final. Even the other day, I thought he was doing a lot of work right after, or right before he was pulled out. I remember, uh, again, I mentioned this a while ago, that I, I thought he made a big sprint and it was pulled out immediately and he sort of wondered why he was being pulled out. Well, this is why. Well, let's see how Sao Paulo responds. They were in a great form after giving scoring the goal. Steve, you mentioned some of the extra trickery that they were pulling off. Looked like they were feeling quite comfortable. And now Paulinho is offside. It's a long sprint. The flag stays down for now. I'm almost positive it will go up. Ryan Dos Santos scores and the flag goes up. And the tough part about that in the VAR world is that the players have to run 50 yards back sprinting when it's clearly offside. Yeah, I, I'm not sure the referee, uh, the referee's assistant on that side made the right decision there by holding the flag because I thought it was so clearly offside. I agree. I, again, I understand if it's marginal, that's 100%. the rule. You Absolutely. keep the flag down, you delay, no problem. But that one looked like it was five, six yards offside. And maybe he had a little better angle than we did, so maybe it wasn't as close as we thought, but or as far as we thought. So the ball is in. But by the way, nice finish by Dos Santos. But it we, was. We knew that that wasn't going to count. Oh, referee signaling looked like he made the VAR signal to just confirm he, 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 it. No, he was telling the player, VAR has confirmed it, it stopped confirming. Ah. Yeah. That was, uh, he was barking yeah. at Enzo Bohr over on the far yeah, left that, side. That's exactly right. By the way, Bohr and Lucas Ferreira have switched sides now, as wings or midfielders sometimes do. Oh, well, they, uh, the final here of the Gordon Jago Supergroup has not lacked for entertainment here in the first half. Lots going on, lots of action, couple of goals. A lot of energy has been expelled already, but they still have six minutes to post stoppages in the first half and another 45 to follow. By the way, I, I think Daniel Barron's been very good down the left side. Don't uh, don't underestimate the importance of what he did to create the Dallas goal, which was just having the ambition to shoot from long range, the the shot that Priest couldn't handle. Gallo just got enough of that. And it's going to be a goal kick. Ooh, that looks like a warning from referee Kaylor Herrera about a potential simulation. Let's take a look here. Oh, I think uh, referee might have gotten that one wrong. I think there was some contact there. He, remember, had the demonstrative yeah. gesture a few minutes ago on the same player. It is going to be a goal kick. I, I understand what uh, referee Killer Herrera saw there. He saw that uh, maybe if there was contact, there was a step or two taken. But I, I, I think that, I think that left him unbalanced, and that's. No. I'll leave it there. Aguiano. Tell you what, been impressed with Aiden Basil's play so far. He's kind of reminds me of a Walker Zimmerman type with his presence so far in this one. I know that we gave a lot of love to Luke Schreiner in the semifinal, but Basil's been up for this one. For sure. Sao Paulo with a throw in. Igor. Deflected away, chance for another counterattack. The ball is behind Lacey there. Salazar was trying to get that out of his feet quickly, and they could not connect. Alvis down the right, lots of space for Igor in the corner. First time ball, service, header drops in. That was knocked wide. The flag did not go up, or did it? Yes, it was, offside. Well, it's, it, it very, goal, very goal, late. Yeah, a goal kick is, I think, what the indication was. But I agree, if that had something had come of that, uh, he was offside. He 
Yeah, as soon as the ball went out, I looked, I took a glance down there at the referee's assistant to see if that flag was going up, and it wasn't. But then he took two steps away from the end line and pointed, looking like an offside point. It was confusing. But it will be a throw for Dallas here on the near side as we are approaching the end of the first half. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a couple minutes of stoppage time with two goals. We had a nasty coming together that uh, with uh, Enzo Bohr and Dylan Lacey where they both slid into each other, a couple of treatments. There was a, a collision where Bohr got checked. He's been involved in quite a bit yeah. here in the first 45. Yeah, a couple of times when the referee held play while uh, VAR was taking a look at something. No, no official reviews on the field, but uh, checks in the booth. And for better or for worse, there's a, a lot of passion on the field from players aimed at the officials, coaches, the, each other. Makes for a spicy encounter. Yeah, I think it's been well handled. It's been, uh, um, it's, it has been passionate, but nothing. Uh, I nothing's say over got, the top. Nothing's gotten out of hand. Yeah, yet. it hasn't boiled over at all. Lacey charging down Igor. First touch. Ferreira got a foot in to Angiano, and now Dallas can break. Down the left. Lacey has Baron with him. Wants to go to his left foot, and he scores! He just tucked that in the right post. It didn't look like he had the angle, but Daniel Barron has hit back, and Dallas has their second, and they lead. 43rd minute, FC Dallas 2, Sao Paulo 1. Well, I'll tell you what, it's a strange game sometime because Sao Paulo looked for all the world like they had things under control. They had a lead doing the tricks and flicks. And this is just uh, two players combining. There's really not much else there. They don't have any other options. It was pretty clear that the, uh, Dylan Lacey was going to dribble until he had to give the ball off to his right into Barron. Uh, I, I think we could all see what was going to happen. And Barron, as he gets the ball, he's got a lot of con defenders converging. So what does he do? Instead of winding up to shoot, he just tries a little toe poke, and he gets it right. Sometimes the toe poke works. Well, because, because the goalkeeper isn't really set. You know, as soon as you, it's hard to anticipate, isn't it? As soon it? as you move your foot back, goalkeepers are ready to spring. You know, they know they anticipate the shot, but on the when you toe poke like that, it just it can catch the goalkeeper by surprise, and I think that's what happened. Gomez is coming off his line, slides, takes it out of the play, and then out, and then trying to slow things down. Enzo Boris trying to catch him off his line by quickly getting it forward. There was a collision. Referee says play on. Nothing doing between Paulinho and Schreiner. Lacey, one on four. He's going to go for it, trying to catch Price off his line. That is a shot attempt, but nowhere near the target. No, I saw what he was doing. He, he looked up as soon as that ball was on the ground. Price was sort of scrambling to make his way back. and So his eyes got a little wide there, Dylan Lacey's did. Well, this is a surprise, but I think we're in for for a heck of a second half now. Have you noticed that Lacey's been leading the line here, uh, and I think that's really changed things since that all that pressure from Sao Paulo, because he's been showing the appetite to make those runs and cause chaos off the ball. Here he is again, headed away by Loss, only as far as Barrent, little one touch. Ramirez, left foot, hit Lacey. Salazar, over the head, Gallo. Sliding challenge, or sliding attempt to cross. I think he was on side, it was tight. But and again, back to the point, Lacey, rather than playing in a deeper role and chasing the game, he's doing a lot of damage being at the top of the line. Yeah, I agree. It's like he and Nieves have, have switched positions. Mm -hmm, exactly. Well, his engine has been revving at high lines and seems like he has the fuel to do it. And you can see that it's picked up the rest of his teammates. Obviously, they got the equalizer from the penalty spot. That was because Lacey drew it. And then he was the one that set up Barron for that shot. I think he's had a much better half here than he even did in the semifinal. More impactful. Two minutes of stoppage time added. Here at the end of the first half, Igor flicks it across. Schreiner heads it away. Well, the referee says that was awkward, but okay. Gallo just mashes it, and again, 
Price is way off his line. But that would have been something ridiculous to score from, what, I would say 80 yards away? Yeah. Igor, blocked by Anguiano. Can't be much time left here in stoppage time. Igor looks up and everybody's standing around. You have to think that for as much energy as Dallas has used in this half that Sao Paulo also has had to go to quite the well. Cross comes in dangerously through the back line, but nobody could get on the end of that as Enzo Bohr's left-footed curler, a little too far for Ryan, Ferreira, and Paulinho, but he had options. And there it is, the end of the first half, a riveting 45 minutes, Steve. So FC Dallas goes to break with a 2-1 lead over Sao Paulo. We will have more for halftime coverage next. said she wasn't hungry. She only wanted a bite. But this isn't just a patty melt. This is a Whataburger patty melt. The all-time favorite. With two all-beef patties, Monterey Jack, grilled onions, and creamy pepper sauce. So one bite became two. And two became mine. Just a bite, huh? Mark that one down as a lesson learned. The Whataburger patty melt. Just like you like it. Tacoma, Toyota, let's go places. How can you describe Whataburger's honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich? The chicken just has a certain... And then there's the sauce that just gives you a little bit of... And the cheese, it's the exact right amount of... It's almost too hard to put it into... Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. The Honey Barbecue Chicken Strip Sandwich at Whataburger. Just like you like it. Halftime here at the 2024 Dallas Cup Gordon Jago Supergroup, which is brought to you by Coca-Cola. And by the Dallas Tourism Public Improvement District. By Puma by Toyota, and by the Dallas Sports Commission. Well, for the final time of our broadcast week, here is a short video encapsulating what it means to be part of Dallas Cup. Thank you. 
Welcome world to my hometown in the 2024 Dallas Cup. I'm Weston McKinney from the U.S. Men's National Team. I'm very excited to be joined in the Puma family and I'm wishing you guys all the best of luck in this tournament. Uh, hopefully you guys form a lot of connections uh, with many different cultures and people. Um, and make sure you guys stop by Soccer Corner's tent to pick up the latest Dallas Cup Puma gear. See you guys. Can you describe Whataburger's Honey Barbecue Chicken Strip Sandwich? The chicken just has a certain... And then there's the sauce that just gives you a little bit of... And the cheese? It's the exact right amount of... It's almost too hard to put it into... Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. The Honey Barbecue Chicken Strip Sandwich at Whataburger. Just like you like it. said she wasn't hungry. She only wanted a bite. But this isn't just a patty melt. This is a Whataburger patty melt. The all-time favorite. With two all-beef patties, Monterey Jack, grilled onions, and creamy pepper sauce. So one bite became two, and two became mine. Just a bite, huh? Mark that one down as a lesson learned. The Whataburger patty melt. Just like you like it. Tacoma, Toyota, let's go places. At CC's, beats your dreams come true. But the best part of CC's is you, and you, and you. <laughs> Me? Keep up, Doc. Dive right into my wondrous buffet. When it comes to pizza, ugh, you know that I slay. These desserts were made for stacking, like these games were made for whacking. Uh-oh, see ya. Reviews are in, the critics are raving, even the super specific pregnancy craving. So come beat the band and pull up a chair. CC's the best pizza value anywhere. At CC's, pizza dreams come true. But the best part of CC's is you, and you, and you. <coughs> Me? Keep up, Doc. Dive right into my wondrous buffet. When it comes to pizza, ugh, you know that I slay. These desserts were made for stacking, like these games were made for whacking. Uh-oh, see ya. The reviews are in, the critics are raving, even the super specific pregnancy craving. So come beat the band and pull up a chair. CC's, the best pizza value anywhere. Halftime here at Toyota Stadium in the showpiece of the 2024 Dallas Cup, the Gordon Jago Super Group Final. FC Dallas leading Sao Paulo FC from Brazil 2-1 at the break. Owen Newkirk alongside Steve Davis. Steve, after a bright start from the Dallas side, it was a Lucas Ferreira goal in the 15th minute that put Sao Paulo in the lead. Yeah, strange game sometimes because Dallas did have a bright start. But then it just looked like Sao Paulo was in control, cruising, trying to tricks and flicks. They had the lead. And then it's really just been Daniel Barron and uh, uh, Dylan Lacey really driving the attack. And all of a sudden, uh, two late goals in the, before the, right before the break. 2-1 FC Dallas. They're trying to become the third team, third local team to win the 
Dallas Cup Supergroup. It would be the second for FC Dallas, along with their 2017 championship, if they can do it. For Sao Paulo, they've won the Supergroup three times. As Steve mentioned, the last time wasn't it was in 2009 as they beat the Vancouver Whitecaps in the final. But it was goals from Jared Salazar from the penalty spot after a long Daniel Barron shot was spilled by Felipe Price. Rebound was taken away. And then the second goal, Barron in the 43rd minute. Second half is coming up shortly. Don't go anywhere. We'll have it for you next. Said she wasn't hungry. She only wanted a bite. But this isn't just a patty melt. This is a Whataburger patty melt. The all-time favorite. With two all-beef patties, Monterey Jack, grilled onions, and creamy pepper sauce. So one bite became two. And two became mine. Just a bite, huh? Mark that one down as a lesson learned. The Whataburger patty melt. Just like you like it. How can you describe Whataburger's Honey Barbecue Chicken Strip Sandwich? The chicken just has a certain... And then there's the sauce that just gives you a little bit of... And the cheese? It's the exact right amount of... It's almost too hard to put it into... Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. The Honey Barbecue Chicken Strip Sandwich at Whataburger. Just like you like it. Second half, getting ready to commence here at Toyota Stadium. FC Dallas with a 2-1 lead over Sao Paulo in the Gordon Jago Supergroup Final. They'll switch ends. Dallas will attack the National Soccer Hall of Fame South goal for the second half. Sao Paulo with the ball. They're down a goal, and they've got to find a way to get themselves back level. They have plenty of attacking options, including a couple of players that started the semifinal on Friday on the bench that we could see. But right now, it's FCD with the front foot opportunity at the end of 45. Here we go with the second half. It's going to be interesting to see how Sao Paulo responds now that they're behind because uh, in the semifinal the other night that we watched, they were very comfortable all the way, just cruising to the 4-0 win over Fulham, just never really looked stretched. Interestingly, the PA system music is still playing as the game has started, sort of giving a sense that the action isn't official, but it is. We promise you. And I promise you that's not a normal trend here at the Dallas Cup. There it goes as the play is into the second minute of half number two. A little flick over the top, running down the right side. Oh, 
Owen, credit to you. You were the first one to pick out. When Nieves and Dylan Lacey switched positions, Nieves was starting as a higher striker first, Dylan Lacey underneath him, where we saw the other day in that 4-2-3-1. But when they switched positions, I think that really assisted FC Dallas. Steve, I see a change. Uh, hasn't been announced yet, but Marcelo, number 18, is in the game for Sao Paulo. And here we go. Here's the announcement of it as Lucas Ferreira runs down the left side. So Enzo Bohr taken off the field. Here's a diving header by Paulinho in the box. I believe it's a foul called against the Sao Paulo striker. And so it wouldn't have counted either way, but that's an early sign of intent, as you know, that this Sao Paulo side is not gonna just roll over. So a halftime change is Marcelo, who started the semifinal, is in. First of six potential subs. There's a curling ball sent away by Schreiner. Lacey, Salazar. Barron, who has a big part of this two goal swing, helped create the penalty by taking the shot that was spilled by Felipe Price and then scored the go ahead goal that stands as the Difference in this match to this point. Uh, another really good defensive moment there from Aiden Bazell, Aiden Basil. Thought he was really good in the first half. By the way, he's already signed with uh, High Point University, sort of a growing college soccer program. In North Carolina. The 49th minute. The throw, Angiano forward for Nieves. Do you think Nieves has been a little bit more effective playing in that underneath role once they switched than he was playing at the top of the line? Or maybe it's just allowing Lacey to get forward. Here's the ball over the top. Gallo cuts it back. Lacey shouted for it, takes the shot, and Felipe Price fights it off. It's curling and staying in play. But the first legal opportunity belongs to FC Dallas. Remember there's one for Paulinho but it was ruled that he committed a foul against Anthony Ramirez. In the box, Nieves rips one, but it was wide. I like that FC Dallas, every chance they've gotten today, anywhere near goal, they take shots. You know, they haven't been afraid to go ahead and take the responsibility, you know, to be courageous in the final third. It really paid off a while ago. If you remember, it was a what looked like an ambitious shot from Barron that uh, was spilled by goalkeeper Price, and that turned into the ended up turning into the penalty kick. Throw in on the right side by Gallo, flicked by Nieves. It was behind Lacey, but he tracks it down. Ramirez. Heavy first touch, sent away by Alves. I don't know if Sao Paulo's necessarily surprised, but they have definitely had to adjust things because of the fight that Dallas has brought to this final. And of course, getting the lead, you can hear the home supporters are trying to urge them along throughout the early stages of the second half. Once again, the substitutes for both sides are starting to make their a presence felt as the Sao Paulo players trot down behind the south goal. FC Dallas players now loosening up on the north end as they typically do here at Toyota Stadium. So, Owen, we've talked about how this FC Dallas team is trying to become the third team, third local team to win the Supergroup. Uh, it was the Texans 
back in 2006. That team had Omar Gonzalez, a uh, name very familiar with soccer fans, and now playing for FC Dallas, uh, the, the big boys, senior team. 2017, as you mentioned a while ago, FC Dallas won the Super Group. They beat Monterey in the final. I'll tell you a little bit about that team in a minute. Lucas Ferreira, ball through, onside for now, Marcelo. The flag goes up, offside flag. There was a debate of whether there was contact for a penalty, but the assistant referee on the far side, Gabriela Jimenez, has Marcelo flagged for offside anyway. Let's take a look. And I thought it wasn't uh, wasn't really that close. I thought he was offside. Not going to get a really good look at it from this angle, but you get a good look at the passing lane that opened up there. And Again, we talk about Sao Paulo opening up those passing lanes with all that interchange and all the good movement in the final third. And if he was onside, I'm not sure if there was a lot of contact there. Ramirez was a little bit behind him. Gomez came out, and it kind of looked like Marcelo started to go down anticipating contact. So that 2017 FC Dallas Supergroup team to beat Monterey in the final as uh, goalkeeper Victor Gomez is going to get a little bit of a word here, a little talking to. So some of the names on that team, Paxton Pomichol, Jesus Ferreira, Brandon Cervania, Reggie Cannon, all guys that went on Ooh. to play. Uh, in, in the case, of course, Paxton and, and uh, Jesus Ferreira still play for FC Dallas. Brandon Cervania, of course, still in the league. Reggie Cannon has gone overseas. He's in England now. So what a, what a team that was. A little flip, back heel flick. Boy, numbers getting forward as Dallas is towing the line defensively with these players as Ryan gets on the right side, a diving tackle. Aguiano, wow, he did enough. Ryan ends up in a heap. But this is the kind of thing that sooner or later it's going to fall in Sao Paulo's favor if Dallas doesn't get a little bit more control of that back line. Oh, you knew Sao Paulo was, uh, was going to come out like this in the second half. And uh, they really just have to match the intensity, match the intent. I thought Aguiano did a really good job there, understanding that he needed to attempt that tackle before it reached the 18. That way, if he got it wrong, it's, you know, it's a dangerous free kick, but it's not a penalty kick. What do you think about the level of belief for this FC Dallas club now that they've scored twice and have the lead going into the second half? Uh, why, why wouldn't you believe? You know, you, you understand the opportunity now. Coming into the day, you knew it was tough. You thought you had a chance. Now you look at it and say, you've got a good chance. 45 minutes away from the second ever Super Group Championship for FC Dallas, if they can hang. Yeah, not even that now. 35 minutes plus, plus a little bit. And some room to run the other way as Sao Paulo heaps players forward. Nieves against Lucas Loss. Good hold up play. Leaves it back for Marquez, who checks his shoulder, but then gets caught from behind anyway. But he did everything right until the first touch. And now a quick counter, and Ryan Dos Santos is absolutely furious with that pass from Paulinho, because I think he wanted that to his feet as he was running forward. I, it, I mean, I feel like by this time, almost by this time of the first half, we were seeing some of that Brazilian flair, and now what we're seeing is Brazilian frustration. Barron, nice move. Has a chance to switch, plays it a little behind Lacey, but still able to get to it. I agree with you though. The energy and the vibe around the Sao Paulo side has changed dramatically yeah. since those first, what, 20 minutes or so, where they were almost dancing around the field in a very pretty way, but now they know that they're in for it. Ramirez, a heavy touch, and it could be numbers for breaking again for Sao Paulo. Paulinho cuts back, right foot, long shot wide. Marcelo wanted that early ball. He was open. I just don't know if Paulinho could have made that pass. Well, you can feel the temperature of this game. It's only been rising toward a boiling point. Yeah, that, you know that's funny though. I, I don't know. I don't know that I really see it that way. I see, uh, I see the Brazilian team elevating their level of, of attacking intent, but I see FC Dallas being pretty calm about things. Ferreira steps forward into space through this time on side. The flag is down for now. Marcelo, Paulinho. 
Blocked by Basil. Flag went up, so it was offside. A very delayed call on that one, as is there instructions. Seen a lot of that today, haven't we? Yeah. Well, especially with Sao Paulo pouring players through that back line. But they've got to get it right every time because it will take one. And they're in on Victor Gomez. Schreiner. Long ball through the middle. Ryan. Bernardo, Lucas Ferreira, Palino into the box, header saved by Gomez. Again, it's Ryan Dos Santos on the end of it, but he put it right at Gomez. Good save, either side, maybe he scores. Yeah, as soon as Sao Paulo gets the ball in that moment, they had seven players in the attacking third. So really, we saw this the other day against Fulham. They get a lot of numbers forward, but then they get a lot of numbers back very quickly as well. If Dallas, I don't know if they want to play the counterattack trading blows with Sao Paulo, getting into a track meet. But if they do want to hit them on the break, it's got to be quick because of the commitment for Sao Paulo for getting back, as you mentioned. But, but that's sort of the way they were attacking in the first half anyway just with uh, three, maybe four, maybe a fifth one arriving. And Guiano, nice job to clear that one away after the cross from Paulinho. Igor, out to the right. Alves, ooh, heavy touch, lost it. Marquez will flick it out towards Lacey, but he didn't get that one right. And Marquez one. looking a little tired to me, and FC Dallas about to bring the first change in. Player up for FC Dallas, where's number 39? Angel Madrano, he's the striker who scored the second goal. He's gonna come in for Marquez. Good spot, Steve, on that. Here in the 59th minute, we have Dallas's first change. Now Madrano's gonna go forward, take the place where uh, Dylan Lacey's been playing for so long, it looks like Lacey's gonna drop in and pl play alongside Anthony Ramirez. Well, Lacey was very effective leading the line. We'll see if he can bring that energy into the midfield. Madrano's much more of a target striker. Bernardo, headed away by Basil. Well, I think Dallas has changed its shape. I think they're gonna go into a little bit more defensive 4-4-2. So now Nieves is gonna play on the right side of the, as a midfielder. A little step by Ferreira past the first defender. Gets past Nieves, it looked like he had him covered. And then a collision and a foul will go against G Gallo. I believe. Now some words being exchanged between Gallo and Bernardo. And now it'll be a free kick for Sao Paulo in a pretty advanced position on this left wing. A nice sporting gesture there as Dylan Lacey comes over, lend a helping hand. Bernardo getting warned by the referee Herrera, who came in after the fact and had some harsh words. So I think he wanted to remind him who had the whistle and who was in charge of this one. I like the way Herrera's managed it. He's sort of he's sort of telling the young men how things are out there. And when I said earlier the temperature was rising, it wasn't reaching a boiling point for discipline. Ah. It was, I think, that the intensity of the game keeps getting higher, sure. and every moment seems to be even more highly contested, but not necessarily as the cross comes in, and Ferreira heads it wide. It should have been equal. He missed a golden opportunity from only a couple of yards to not home the level. You know, sometimes, Owen, we talk about a brave header. I think that time, I think that time he, he understood that, Polino understood that maybe the contact was going to arrive there and just didn't want to. I'm sorry, Ferreira. Wow. He had it. A good contact. And now a chance for a counterattack. Salazar. Angel Medrano. Cleared out. Will be a corner kick for Dallas, though. 
It's funny, we're in the 62nd minute. I've got that as the first corner kick for either team. It's funny how that works sometimes, isn't it? Yeah. As it's pretty clear that these two teams are not settling to just get to the end and try to bank one off a defender for a corner kick. From the right flag, they go short. Lacey, back to Ramirez. To the back post, the run, the flick. It will be another corner. They were trying to set up a ball for Luke Schreiner at that far post. You could see him either trying to score or maybe even nod it back across the six. But good defensive work by, I believe it was Igor that got on the end of that. He and Ferreira were over there. Yeah, it was Ramirez who turned that ball around on his left foot and, and sent in a nice little ball toward the back post. Just didn't get quite enough underneath it. Unlike some uh, of our earlier action from previous finals, this one seems like the clock has just been flying by. There's a lot going on. A lot of action, a lot of drama. Gallo. In toward the goalkeeper who gets up well and covers, and he's going to go quickly. A two on one developing if he can win it. Oh, good header by Angiano. And Schreiner got in the way of Marcelo, draws the contact. That was very close to being a two on one rush for Sao Paulo. Dallas will play it quickly. Back to Gomez. He will just smash it up the field. Ferreira. Gallo gets back. A lot of determined work rate from the Dallas defense. Medrano headed away by loss. Nice moment in possession. A minute ago there from Luke Schreiner, who hasn't been as busy today as we saw him the other day in the, in the semifinal. He's already gotten a few minutes with North Texas SC. Andrade lining up another pinging cross. Good read there by Barron, but Igor keeps it. Now he floats it forward. Wave after wave coming for Sao Paulo. It's a quick question of a possible handball. Marcelo goes down, referee says, get back to your feet, son. And Gomez will just let a couple of seconds tick away before gobbling up that one with his hands. Can feel the tension rising. Maybe it's just me. As Gomez punts it up the field. Nieves with a little flick. Medrano nods it down. Salazar. Good job by the two target guys up front to get it to Barron out to the right. Or the left, rather. On his left foot, he shoots and a fingertip save. That's not the first time that Daniel Barron has taken a shot that didn't look that dangerous. And all of a sudden forced a full stretch save from Felipe Price. I think he has a deceptive release on his shot there. Oh, well, he certainly did a while ago as he scored in the 43rd minute on that, on that toe poke. Third corner kick coming up this half for FC Dallas. They'll play it short again. Same play, Ramirez. He'll go toward that cross. No, he's gonna take the shot instead. I don't know if Price was anticipating that, but it never was going to go down, always rising. Interesting little routine they had. Uh, so Paulo trying to get forward. A good little touch by Anguiano, Alves. And Lacey, side of the foot, good little touch there. Paulinho, Alves running into the right corner. Now crosses a little behind the striker, but Ferreira's in the box. Left foot and punched away. Good strong save by Gomez with a fierce strike from Ferreira. And he keeps it out. It will be a corner for Sao Paulo. Now you're right, Ferreira hit that a ton. And it was, it was close enough to Gomez that he was able to it might have even taken a little bit of a deflection. I thought I saw some kind of weird movement on that. But good job of getting enough of two gloves on it to push it well high. First corner kick today for Sao Paulo. Here's the cross in off the right flag toward the back post, headed back down, across the middle, back in, and it's level. Sao Paulo has equalized off the corner kick. 
2-2 in the 66th minute. And it's Bernardo that has scored to make it 2-2. Well, you felt like a second ago that Dallas had lost just a little bit of defensive intensity. I thought that when I saw that they got caught in two minds about whether or not they were going to press or just drop back, and that sort of alerted me that maybe they're, they're getting a little tired, they're dropping their defensive intensity a little bit, and you saw it again as the marking, maybe not as good as it should have been there inside the penalty area. It turns into a little bit of a scramble. And now it turns into a 2-2 draw so far. They knew they were towing a tightrope on that particular circumstance. Schreiner heads this one back to Gomez. So we're all square, 2-2. 23 minutes plus stoppages to be played here in the Gordon Jago Super Group. If it gets to 90 minutes tied, we will not go straight to penalties. 20 minutes of extra time would be played to 10 minute halves. Barron, again on Igor. He's been very difficult down that left side. Tries to shrug him off, then crosses off of the right back, and it will be a corner kick. A little insult to injury for Igor, who wanted a foul. Those two have really had a battle. And it will be a corner kick for Dallas from the other side. We'll see if they run a similar routine. And this time, Sao Paulo sends two guys forward. One guy's, as Bernardo's, only five yards away, he has to be backed off by the referee. Uh, oh, there's definitely contact there, but I feel like it was uh, coming from both sides, so good job there from the referee just to let him play. Lacey pings it toward the back post. Schreiner has to go over his head. That had a little too much on it. Keeps it alive, and that's gonna be a throw. And there's no doubt that on these corner kicks, these set pieces, they are trying to find Schreiner at the back post on his head. He's a big, imposing guy but they haven't been able to connect just yet. Gallo the throw. Barron between two teammates, long clearance. Marcelo running after it. Basil gets there first, holds him off. Well done. Aiden Basil has been excellent today in the Dallas back line. Lacey. Has that one go off an arm? Referee says play on. It looked like it hit the right arm of Alves, who then goes down on a foul from Ramirez, and he is gonna get a talking to. Boy, Paulinho smashed the ball against the advertising boards on the near side after the whistle in a little bit of frustration. The fourth official is telling the Dallas bench to settle down, but we'll see, there's conversations going on. I think Dallas was upset at the no call. What looked like maybe a handball in play against Sao Paulo, and now... And Ramirez took out a little bit of that frustration in, in the form of a tough foul. Didn't see yellow, though. Nope. Again, I like the way Herrera's managed the game, mostly without cards. By the way, Alves is back on his feet. Totally without cards, right? No yellow cards yet? Don't believe we've seen one yet in the Supergroup final, correct? Here's the ball in, Gomez wins the punch, then takes the contact, and we are gonna see our first yellow card here. Gomez was the one that took the punch, or the punched the ball, and we had a yellow card against Marcelo, and it brought everybody together, and speaking of trying to manage the game, the referee's trying to calm things down right now. Okay, now you can talk about boiling points. <laughs> boiling over, perhaps? Even the assistant referees, as we have another yellow card shown. Luke Schreiner has seen yellow, in addition to Marcelo, here in the 71st minute. Well, Gomez comes out, he gets the punch, and has a lot of contact there. You know, to his credit, Gomez gets right up and sort of sort of tries to tell the referee, I'm fine, nothing nothing to it. And then he, he gets right back at the player that's just hit him and just sort of holds him and says, I'm okay, it's fine. He's just doing his best to, to really calm things down. Well, this is all to play for still. 2-2, two -two, 72nd minute. The referee has a finger to his ear. I'm sure they're just double-checking to make sure there isn't anything off the ball. And 
VAR has cleared that. And the ball by Gomez is out for a throw. In today's day and age, a lot more dark arts things can't go on behind the referee's attention like it maybe used to get away with. You, you know, I'll tell you, Owen, I, I've watched this games in this tournament for a long time, and what, what we used to talk about a lot was that the foreign teams, especially one like Sao Paulo, that really is a bunch of professional players, they knew more about the dark arts. They knew more about how to manipulate the game in little ways, manip manipulate the referee. But, you know, this referee today, He's seen it all. He's a Costa, Rica, he's a Costa Rican CONCACAF level official, and I just think he's done a good job of just saying, no, I'm not having it. No, don't do that. And not even paying attention to that mess. It's clear that this stage, this match is not too big for him. Yeah. And, and to be fair, look, the American players have, have caught up a little bit on some of that stuff too. Especially when they get into CONCACAF World Cup qualifying and Nations League play. Well, see I mean, a lot of I that? I mean, even at this level, because they, they watch all of that stuff. Not so much of a surprise. Yeah. There'll be a throw here for Sao Paulo. Andrade. Schreiner heads it away. Madrano. Lacey got underneath it, kind of floated it. I think he was trying to maybe send Salazar on a sprint against Lucas Loss, who was the last man back. I know there's still plenty of time and potentially two 10-minute extra times, but interesting so far, Owen, 74th minute now, only one sub for each team, and they have six available at this level. And Marcelo at halftime came on for Enzo Bohr, who also seemed like he was the closest to going into the referee's pocket. Foul called against Alvis. And then the sub for Dallas, Madrano came in for Marquez in a bit of a formation shift, moving Dylan Lacey back. But we could see that Luis Marquez looked like he was starting to fatigue, tire out a bit. And speaking of formation shift, uh, Ismael Nieves, uh, I see him now, I guess, playing as a second striker. He started as a striker, dropped into holding midfield, rotated around a little bit, as a, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, dropped into the uh, playmaking midfield role, rotated around a little bit as a holding midfielder, played right midfield for about 15 minutes, and now I think he's back up front. What a player. Loyola Marymount signing. He's on the ball there with a touch to Lacey. Now through, Barron with space. He has Madrano with him. First time ball, and it's a little behind. Still available? No, cleared away. The combination defending of Two Sao Paulo players, Andrade and Osorio, did enough. I think the idea for Barron was there. He just underhit it. Here's Andrade. Play it back to Osorio. He was the second man on that defensive cleanup. The first goal scorer of the match, Lucas Ferreira. Hard tackle from Gallo. Free kick awarded for Sao Paulo. Will they play it quickly? Interesting, isn't it, Owen, how different games take different shapes in different ways? Mm. We thought Anthony Ramirez absolutely ran the game the other day from, from, uh, from his midfield, ran the midfield at least, and he just hasn't been as involved today. A Brazilian player is down. There was some contact with Nieves. Perhaps an accusation of a hand to the face from Bernardo. Referee wasn't interested in that. Nieves went over to make sure he was okay. <laughs> some players taking the opportunity to get a drink or two and now Christian Gallo tried to crab walk onto the field. He looks like he's in some discomfort. The referee's not having it. <laughs> Tried to, climb. speaking of dark arts, yep. wiggle back on to delay the game a little bit. Referee says, you better stay off. And play will resume here. Gallo, the right back for Dallas. Not really something that FCD wants to spend a lot of time playing down a man. 
I'm, not, I'm shocked the referee's gonna let play go on with the with the player on the field. And and as he is on that line, he is technically on the field. Now he's moved him back just a little bit. A foul here on Bernardo who got Nieves back a little bit. Interesting, that was pretty quick retribution. Gallo is on his feet now after getting some treatment. He is yet to be waved back onto the field. His day might be done. Yeah, it looks like he is, as they are hastily readying a substitute. 15 minutes or less. And this super group final, 2-2. Two -two. So Paolo tried to go quickly, the referee wasn't having it, and now the substitution is gonna come here. Not yet. Oh, he had a bracelet or something on his wrist that the fourth official spotted. I also, I also don't think he's officially checked in yet. Lacey, sliding challenge, couldn't get there. Bernardo pops it over the top. Gomez there first. Malachi Molina is the player who's about to come in for FC Dallas as soon as... Oh, well, maybe it's gonna be somebody else or maybe more than one. Yeah. Uh, hastily done second change as the shot comes in and deflects off the top of the crossbar. Meanwhile, Dallas still playing down a man. Has got to get things sorted out in a rather quick fashion. And now Molina's being pulled back into the technical area. Now Chuy Vera down on the FC Dallas sideline. Trying to get things sorted out. And Isaac Romero, number 46 instead, is going to come on for Christian Gallo, who did not return from that injury treatment. Second sub here for Dallas coming in the 79th minute. Header down by Madrano, Salazar. Steve, I uh, want to continue your point earlier about Ishmael Nieves's utility man, jack of all trades. He looks like he's moved to right back. There's a pass through. Could be flag up, could be okay. Igor in, and it scores. The flag stays down. It was the late run from Igor that puts that one off of Gomez and in, and Sao Paulo has a 3-2 lead here in the 80th minute. Well, they'll check it, but I agree with you. I think there was a player, maybe two in an offside position, but they let the ball run. Igor making that late run from the right side. They recognized that he wasn't going to be offside. And in the end, it's a really good finish. Gomez gets a little bit of a glove on it. Not enough to keep it out, though. So now FC Dallas has 10 minutes plus stoppage time, and I think we'll have quite a bit of stoppage time to oh, try goodness. to find the equalizer. Well, it's been exciting so far. And as we have a helicopter circling Toyota Stadium for a look, the VAR is checking this one. There's the whistle yeah, confirming I, goal. I, yeah, I didn't think there was much doubt that uh, the two players were in an offside position, yeah. but I don't think they really, in the end, interfered with play. So as Igor comes from an onside position, uh, I felt like he was well onside. It was a smart play to let it go for him. Maybe not the first guy you would think of as being the goal scoring threat on this talented Sao Paulo roster, but boy, what a great late run he made from the right back position. But we talked about it for, for two different games now, how many players they get committed to into the attack. And you saw it again right there as the right back in transition ends up with a goal. Ramirez plays it long, over the top, Madrano running, long way to go, too far as Andrade just watches it go out.
Nine minutes to go plus stoppage time. Andrade throws it up. Ferreira, hold up. Poked by Nieves. And it goes out for a Dallas throw. Do they have anything in them for one last magical surge to go from down a goal to eat the level and maybe force extra time? Boy, one of the Sao Paulo players is pulled up with a cramp. He went down, got back up, Nieves missed it. Again, Bill been a very long week for these players. So it's Paulinho, the one that was on the verge of lying down to get some treatment, but he's okay for now. Well, there's going to be a substitution here for Sao Paulo momentarily. It's Luis Felipe Ribeiro is ready to check in. Referee calls a foul for a handball. And all this is just sort of grinding down the pace. It was It's funny, Sao Paulo was really push, push, pushing, and now all of a sudden they've switched a gear and changed their flow in dramatic fashion. As, as you would expect. Paulinho off, Ribeiro on. He's the second sub for the Brazilians to come on tonight. Past six o'clock. 3-2, Sao Paulo over FC Dallas here in the 84th minute. Uh, Dallas is gonna have to change their approach there because as that ball got in, got well into the Brazilian end, FC Dallas really only had three attackers up there. Foul called on Marcelo kept playing. Referee had to blow the whistles, and here comes another substitution. Boy, we were, we almost had Malachi Molina coming in, got pulled back. They made a different change, and now the substitution will be Anguiano coming out for FC Dallas with number 43, Niall Waugh checking in. Well, they can bring in as many substitutions as they want, but they've, they've got to get a few more numbers into the attack. And I get it. You're tired, and you don't want to give up you know, a goal that's going to absolutely seal it for, for Brazil, but uh, it's a mistake there. Tough ball across behind Basel. So it'll be a Sao Paulo throw-in, and they look like they're going to go for four. Curled in, right to Gomez, who handles it well. Well, you say that, but I feel like if that had been 15 minutes ago, there wouldn't be five people in the attack. There would be eight. <laughs> Very much so. But they didn't just go to the corner flag either. Ferreira's in an offside position. And then he touched the ball. It wouldn't have mattered. It would have been a throw in either way for Dallas. So, right. But he could have maybe bled a few seconds away instead. I feel like Sao Paulo was a little more compact defensively in the first half, and ironically it hurt them a little bit because Dallas kept getting out of their own end with the big switch. Now Sao Paulo is they're, they're being a little bit more expansive in defense and taking away that big switch, although that's a good diagonal. Good ball by Lacey up to Barron. Down the right side, turn the corner, and Andrade with help from Osorio clears it away to the cheers from the Sao Paulo supporters. Be a Dallas throw here. I think you'd like to have seen Barron go ahead and hit that ball across. He had a couple of potential targets as opposed to taking one more touch. Barron's first touch goes straight up in the air. He heads it down. Ramirez, Nieves, Lacey. Nice touch there by Waugh. Stepping up Ramirez on his left foot. Floats it in. Last ditch defending there by Lucas Loss. Salazar couldn't get it under control, and now a chance for a Sao Paulo break. Ferreira sends it up towards Ryan. Defended by Basil. 
So Santos had it taken away, but then it deflected very kindly for the Brazilians. And now another through ball. Marcelo down the right side. Ryan Dos Santos wide open in the middle. Marcelo leaves it off. Alves defended and taken away. And now Dallas can push forward again if they want. Wah was making a run, but he was a couple yards offside. Well, that's good defending a minute ago by Basel. Good step over. Cutting in. Marcelo leaves it off. Ryan takes the shot. It was blocked by Schreiner. It felt like Dallas was on the verge of conceding again, but then a big, chunky, meaty challenge by Alves on Ramirez. And Lucas Ferreira gets a yellow card for kicking the ball away here in the 88th minute. I think Ferreira wanted that ball a minute ago, played across to him, and he would have had a wide open shot at about eight or nine yards. This match There's has been full of drama. Uh, there's the big challenge that drew the yellow card. It actually wasn't going to be a yellow on Alves, but then Ferreira kicked that ball away. Lacey up to Waugh. Waugh goes back between the defenders. They'll have to chase it down. Now that's a tough ball. Nieves was getting forward. The Pass from Schreiner wasn't on on target. Uh, Schreiner's tired. His last pass was behind his target, went out of bounds, rolled out of bounds. That one was just too soft. He just looks like he's uh, he's exhausted from the big semifinal the other night where he was so good and chasing the Brazilian guys around all afternoon in the final here. Well, Malachi Molina, who we thought was going to be subbed on a while ago, now coming on as he replaces Jared Salazar, who scored from the penalty spot. Put in a lot of work, did Salazar here. And he's yeah, really 89 well taken, minutes. Well taken penalty kick. Gomez back in his goal, chops it to the left side. Basil. Gomez all, all day long has been really good with his feet on the on the distribution. He really has. Basil, that ball did not settle for him well. It took a while to come up down. Uh, here's Molina getting his first action. Nigel Waugh, or Niall Waugh, excuse me. Back out to Molina. What can they do here in, it'll be soon to be second half stoppage time. We're in the 90th minute. Sao Paulo with a 3-2 lead. They went from Dallas having the 2-1 edge to now trailing by a goal. Second half strikes by Bernardo off a corner. And then Igor on the through ball in the 80th minute. 67th minute on the Bernardo goal. That leveled it. And so Paolo's trying to earn their fourth Supergroup championship, but first since 2009. Dallas is trying to get back into this one to get their second. Great diving challenge by the goalkeeper, Gomez. As he gets there ahead of Ribeiro. A brave goalkeeping. Gomez has been good today. Lacey pings one across the field too far for Ramirez. Looks like we're going to get another substitution for Sao Paulo here as we've reached the 90th minute. Three minutes. Seems like a very small amount of stoppage time based on all the substitutions and a couple of goals and some yellow cards and some VAR stuff, but three minutes it is. The fourth official was ready to put the board up for a substitution, but the play is resumed. Guillerme is about to come on. Long ball forward. Will there be any late drama here in the second half of this supergroup final? That's it for Alves. He's done for the day. And Guillerme is on. Underway. 
Only a minute or two left, you would think, here in stoppage time. A little back heel from Marcelo. Sliding challenge from Romero. Otherwise, it could have been a two-on-one with Ribeiro and Ryan. Boy, Sao Paulo definitely trying to bleed this one out. We're about 90 seconds into the three minutes right now. So halfway through, Schreiner heads it away, and as you would expect, Sao Paulo not at all in a hurry. Referee's trying to urge them along. There's the throw by Andrade, headed down by Nieves. Cross toward the back post. Ryan just hovering, looking to pinch a late goal and seal it. Molina. Up the left side, but only as far as Igor. He pops it over the top. Ramirez couldn't shield Ryan off of that, so he gets it and keeps it, then flops. <laughs> A very dramatic move, but didn't get the call from the referee. Dallas maybe has time for another surge. Waugh draws the foul on the holdup play. And the referee quickly gets in there. Is Oh, there's a ball kicking away, and a yellow card. Goes against Bernardo, I believe. Well, nothing to do now. Yep. As we're just about finished with the three minutes of original stoppage time. Got to get everybody forward. We've set, seen plenty of late dramatics in this stadium before. Sao Paulo on the verge of celebrating a Dallas Cup final championship here in the Gordon Jago Supergroup. Can I yeah, really just have to clear this ball and they've got it. Can FC Dallas come up with a midfield service into the box? Gomez came up to midfield but didn't go all the way the goalkeeper. Lacey drives it in to the penalty area. It drops, drops down. Schreiner couldn't get the shot away. Molina couldn't get the shot as he fell down. And that's it. And Sao Paulo are your 2024 Dallas Cup Gordon Jago Supergroup champions as they beat FC Dallas in a thrilling match, 3-2 to two here at Toyota Stadium. Yeah, I got to tell you, when I saw the matchup, having watched these teams Friday, I thought Sao Paulo was going to be a really, it's going to be a really tough night, present a really tough night for FC Dallas. And they did, but what a performance here from the FC Dallas young man. Congratulations, Sao Paulo. I think at the end of the day, they were the better team, but not by that much today. Jubilation. Celebration. Mixed with the agony of defeat and heartbreak. We'll have the trophy presentation when we return here at the Dallas Cup. Can you describe Whataburger's Honey Barbecue Chicken Strip Sandwich? The chicken just has a certain... And then there's the sauce that just gives you a little bit of... And the cheese, it's the exact right amount of... It's almost too hard to put it into... Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. The Honey Barbecue Chicken Strip Sandwich at Whataburger. Just like you like it. said she wasn't hungry. She only wanted a bite. But this isn't just a patty melt. This is a Whataburger patty melt. The all-time favorite. With two all-beef patties, Monterey Jack, grilled onions, and creamy pepper sauce. So one bite became two, and two became mine. Just a bite, huh? Mark that one down as a lesson learned. The Whataburger patty melt. Just like you like it.
The all-new Tacoma. Toyota. Let's go places. At CC's Pizza Dreams Come True. But the best part of CC's is you. And you. And you. <coughs> Me? Keep up, Doc. Dive right into my wondrous buffet. When it comes to pizza, ugh, you know that I slay. These desserts were made for stacking, like these games were made for whacking. Uh-oh. See ya. Reviews are in, the critics are raving. Even the super specific pregnancy craving. So come feed the band and pull up a chair. CC's the best pizza value anywhere. Said she wasn't hungry. She only wanted a bite. But this isn't just a patty melt. This is a Whataburger patty melt. The all-time favorite. With two all-beef patties, Monterey Jack, grilled onions, and creamy pepper sauce. So one bite became two. And two became mine. Just a bite, huh? Mark that one down as a lesson learned. The Whataburger patty melt. Just like you like it. Tacoma, Toyota, let's go places. How can you describe Whataburger's honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich? The chicken just has a certain... And then there's the sauce that just gives you a little bit of... And the cheese, it's the exact right amount of... It's almost too hard to put it into... Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. The Honey Barbecue Chicken Strip Sandwich at Whataburger. Just like you like it. Can Billy come out to play? Yes! Woohoo! The all-new Tacoma. Toyota. Let's go places. At CC's Pizza Dreams Come True! But the best part of CC's is you! And you! And you! <coughs> Me? Keep up, Doc! Dive right into my wondrous buffet! When it comes to pizza, ugh, you know that I slay! These desserts were made for stacking, like these games were made for whacking! Uh-oh, see ya! Reviews are in, the critics are raving, even the super specific pregnancy craving! So come feed the band and pull up a chair! CC's the best pizza value anywhere! She said she wasn't hungry. She only wanted a bite. But this isn't just a patty melt. This is a Whataburger patty melt. The all-time favorite. With two all-beef patties, Monterey Jack, grilled onions, and creamy pepper sauce. So one bite became two. And two became mine. Just a bite, huh? Mark that one down as a lesson learned. The Whataburger patty melt. Just like you like it.
said she wasn't hungry. She only wanted a bite. But this isn't just a patty melt. This is a Whataburger patty melt. The all-time favorite. With two all-beef patties, Monterey Jack, grilled onions, and creamy pepper sauce. So one bite became two. And two became mine. Just a bite, huh? Mark that one down as a lesson learned. The Whataburger patty melt. Just like you like it. Toyota Stadium after the conclusion of today's Gordon Jago Supergroup final between FC Dallas and Sao Paulo FC. Sao Paulo with a 3-2 come from behind win. Two goals in the second half to rally to beat the home side here at Toyota Stadium. Owen Newkirk alongside Steve Davis as you see the, the great Gordon Jago on the center of our screen getting ready to pass out the runners-up trophy. The ball and the boots, which will go to the champions of this year's tournament, Sao Paulo. Luke Schreiber, or Schreiner and FC Dallas, a heck of an effort for the U19 Boys Academy Club. Very, very close to winning the second Supergroup Championship title in the history of the club. They won in 2017. They had the lead at halftime, 2-1, to one, Steve. Yeah, and it, uh, it, it was a well-deserved lead. They uh, scored two goals late in the first half to take that lead. But you knew Sao Paulo with all that quality, just uh, too many numbers in the attack, too much quality. Sao Paulo gets their fourth title. So now the winner's medals being passed out. And then they'll be presented with the boot trophy. You can see the golden trophy, that's for first. The silver ball trophy is for second in the runner-up. So in the super group, Sao Paulo won in 1995, 2007, and 2009. So it's been a little bit of a gap since the uh, successful popular team out of Brazil. Uh, players, uh, legacy players uh, that you probably heard of, Cafu and Kaká. Oscar uh, going a little further back, and Milson, Lucas Mora. Yeah, with that, with that team, you could go on and on. The trophy medal still being handed out, and pretty soon that they will get to the trophy presentation, and the, that will conclude our festivities and our broadcast here. They took the table down for the pictures, and now our good buddy Andy Swift has a nice bear hug around the trophy as the presentation. There he is. There's the former executive director of Dallas Cup, still involved after being the head guy for a long, long time. My, my heavens, does somebody need to help him with that thing? That's big. Looks like he's struggling a little bit. One of the nicest human beings you meet, Andy Swift. Couldn't say enough good things about him. And he's a Liverpool supporter, that's just a bonus. <laughs> and he can speak to those guys because he speaks Portuguese. <laughs> Amongst others. Yeah. I also notice that as they get ready to celebrate this one. Here comes the money shot. The players are ready. They're bringing Gordon Jago over to make the official presentation. And here it is. The ball and boot has been passed. 
and Sao Paulo are the champions of the 2024 Gordon Jago Supergroup. Well, Steve, it's been a lot of fun to do the championship weekend again here for the Dallas Cup. Any uh, final thoughts as we wrap this one up from Toyota Stadium? Just that I love doing these finals, enjoy doing them with you. Uh, let's do it again next year, man. I concur wholeheartedly. Thank you so much for joining us. For Steve Davis, I'm Owen Newkirk and our entire crew at Dallas Cup. Happy Easter. So long, everyone.